So at Worlds this year, uh, Senna has been getting a bit more play, finally, um, with teams like T1, NRG, bringing her out uh, with good success, mostly with Tom Kinch. Um, some analysts like LS and Molecule uh, have been talking about how to optimize Fasting Senna uh, because teams are not really doing this. And it's an interesting idea to optimize the resources Senna can get. Um, here's a clip of LS talking about it. Oh, do, they, do you think they know how to do it, by the way? The 3 CS per wave thing? No. Yeah. They probably yeah, don't. Yeah. Per wave. yeah, Senna's supposed to farm 3 CS per wave. And Molecule had a pretty in depth tweet about it. Um, but there's definitely some optimization to be done. And I wanted to go really in depth on the math and figure out exactly what is objectively correct here. Senna pairings, there's basically three main categories here there's supports, which are Champs that can function really well with low economy. Examples are Tom Kench, Seraphine, Soraka. There's bruisers and tanks, champs like Cho'Gath, Scion. And there's carries, champs like Karthus, Ziggs, Nila, uh, champs who need gold to be effective. And we're going to talk about how to best optimize Senna's resources uh, when you have a supportive pairing. Uh, and the idea here is that Senna's resources are more important than the duo's resources. Now, this is a TLDR of what I'm going to go through in this video. Uh, I'm going to go through the math uh, and the logic of how I reached this conclusion. But uh, the TLDR here is to maximize Senna's resources in a lane where she has a supportive uh, pairing. She should farm one melee per wave before five minutes and two melees per wave post five minutes, which is exactly the support item penalty. Um, and at around 100 souls, her pairing should buy the support item. And once they complete the first part of the quest, where they get 500 gold from the item, she should sell her support item and start farming. We're going to explore the idea here if Senna should farm to get herself resources, if uh, you don't care so much about her pairing's resources, right? Uh, champs like Tom Kench, right? Like the value of his ultimate is based really heavily on how strong Senna is, right? If Senna's whatever, you have Tom Kench to eat Senna out of a vial but Senna is really weak, she has no damage, and uh, she's not actually very useful in the team fight. then Kench's ult loses a lot of value. Uh, but if she's really fed, she has a lot of damage, Senna's, or Tom Kench's ult gains a ton of value, uh, more so than like any item would give it value. Uh, so it's mostly important that we're optimizing Senna's resources in this lane. I'm not gonna go too in depth on Senna's passive in this video. I'm gonna assume you have an idea of how it works. If you don't, go read the wiki, watch a video, whatever. Uh, but it effectively cheats the game by increasing the value of every minion that Senna watches her teammate farm. Um, so on the left here, you can see it's a rough estimate of the gold value of a Senna soul. Uh, this is not including the range you get, right? You get one range per soul. Uh, it's a really tough to quantify how much gold that's really worth. Uh, but if we're just talking about the stats and the gold you get from picking a soul off the ground, about 54 gold. And so this table in the middle here shows basically the gold value of every minion if uh, Senna farms it or if her pairing farms it and she's in range to get a soul from it uh, and the difference between those two. Also this table demonstrates why Senna shouldn't take cannon minions if she's just farming until she hits support penalty. Uh, her team loses a lot of gold value compared to the gold value that she gains. Uh, when it comes to cannons compared to melees. If Senna has a pairing who needs gold to be effective, uh, she should not farm any minions because together they will accumulate the most amount of gold value. Um, so when we're talking about Senna's resources, there's two resources she can get. It's her souls and her items. Um, and the main power spikes we're looking for here are the 100 to 120 soul mark roughly. This is generally when uh, Senna's range starts to get really, really oppressive in teamfights, um, and it's hard for people to touch her at all. Um, she starts to get diminishing returns after this point, and she also gets diminishing returns from crit, right? Because when she hits 100% crit, her souls start getting lifesteal, which late game, lifesteal is a pretty useless stat on Senna. Um, now the other uh, power spike is her item. Uh, we're gonna talk about her first item. Uh, now she's always she's gonna rush Swifties in pretty much every game, uh, and then she'll get her first item. 
Now, uh, Bork in general, if she is if she has a supportive pairing, it's going to be her best first item. But we haven't really seen this in pro play. Um, we have seen Stormraiser, which is 300 gold cheaper, so our calculations are going to be like pretty close. Um, and we have seen Umbral as well, so I'm going to include those calculations in here. So like I said, this is about uh, Senna reaching both of these power spikes as quickly as possible. Right, the more range Senna has, the better stats on her are. Uh, the more stats she has, the better ranges on her. So these work hand in hand. Our goal is to not get one or the other of these as quickly as possible. It's to get both. Um, so there's basically four main uh, ways we can uh, go about this. The first one is no farming. This is what you do in solo queue. This is what you do when you have Karthus as your pairing. Number two is farming until you hit the support penalty, which again, before five minutes is one minion per wave. After five is two minions per wave. Number three is farming beyond the support penalty, which uh, in the LS clip, he was talking about three melees per wave, which uh, is beyond the support penalty. So I wanted to include this in here. Uh, and number four is farming everything, where you don't have the support item and you farm all creeps. This was popular three, four years ago, but Senna has been changed so many times since then, so we need to reevaluate whether this is feasible or not. So the first option I want to talk about here is the third option there, which is farming beyond the support penalty. So this is a little table that shows basically how much gold value Senna gets per uh, melee that she kills uh, in both the first five minutes of the, of the game and then between five and ten minutes of the game. Uh, these numbers come from the gold value of a Senesol, right? This doesn't include the range, uh, but this gives you a rough idea. Uh, so as you can see, the highlighted uh, column there is basically the sweet spot of the support penalty. In the first five minutes, if you farm 10, you're getting 103 gold worth of value from those melees, but if you farm 11, uh, even though you're technically getting more gold, you're actually hurting yourself and you are losing gold value. Even if you don't care about how much gold your pairing is getting, uh, you are actively hurting yourself by farming into the penalty. So this is obviously uh, not a good strategy. Now for the other three, um, the best way I think to go about looking at these is to figure out when we will hit our power spikes and what the time difference will be between uh, hitting your item, whether you're farming, not farming. So your soul power spike, you're typically gonna reach it um, anywhere between 18 to 30 minutes, right? If we're talking 100 to 120 souls, uh, it also is heavily dependent on your matchup and how well you're doing in the game, right? If you die, you lose a lot of souls. Um, it varies a lot, but basically the earliest you're gonna be looking at is 18 minutes. Now from this, we basically have to calculate how much time we are gaining uh, from every minion that we're farming uh, and how much faster we're getting our item. Uh, so I made a little spreadsheet to illustrate this. So here's our cute little spreadsheet. Um, basically what I have here is the inputs are over here. You can put in how many kills uh, Senna's gotten, how many assists, plates, towers, how many waves she's missed, right? This is negative gold or negative souls and the current time in the game. And basically this table is an estimate roughly of how much gold Senna will have and how many souls she will have, uh, or rather how many souls she will get from minions. Um, this is obviously rough. I'm not gonna go too in depth on how I like went about calculating these, um, but they do take into account that like first five minutes, you can farm less, you'll get less, uh, you'll get more souls from minions if you farm, uh, right, if you have the support item. Um, but basically we're looking at kills, assists, plates, towers, uh, how much gold your support item gives you, uh, how much gold you get from uh, souls dropping on the ground, right, that eight gold, uh, how much gold you get from killing minions, Right? If you're not farming, you're getting zero. And how much passive gold you're getting from just existing in the game for however much time it is. Uh, and then these are the outputs here. This is how much gold Senna has gotten from all of these sources. Obviously, like I said, this is not completely extensive, right? There's like pinks, there's bounties, there's whatever. This is just to get a general idea. Um, then there's how many souls you've lost from last hitting minions, right? Uh, if you last hit a minion, the chances of dropping a soul are less. So this is an estimate of how many souls you've lost from doing that. And this is an estimate of how much gold your pairing has lost from you taking those minions. 
Uh, and as you can see, that's equivalent to the goals you get from taking those minions. So after plugging in a whole bunch of numbers here, uh, I was able to derive this table here, which I have one for Bork and I have one for Umbral. And this is to give you an idea of how much time it's going to take you to get your item. So I have, based on how fed you are, if you're super fed, you got four kills in the lane, you got first tower, whatever, um, versus if you got nothing and you dropped six waves somehow. Um, but we're going to be looking here in the middle, mostly, uh, at the averages. So you can see here, this is the time in minutes it takes for you to reach this item spike. In this case, it's 4,200 gold. Um, you can see how many souls you have lost for this and how much gold your pairing has lost. Uh, and the same thing down here if you're farming. Uh, this stat here is calculated from this. This is souls lost per minute gained. So basically this two here is saying, okay, uh, for every minute that I'm getting my item spike faster, I am sacrificing two souls. Um, and this is really great to compare to this number. If you're farming every minion, you are sacrificing five souls to get your item a minute faster. Uh, and you can see this pattern uh, repeats if you're just going Umbral. It's actually even more favored towards uh, Umbral of losing the least amount of souls possible per minute gained. And this row here is similar. It's how much gold your pairing has lost for each minute that you are getting your item faster. So using this spreadsheet, we can figure out basically how many souls you're sacrificing to get your item faster by farming. Uh, so if you are farming until the support item penalty, you're losing nine souls, which is roughly two minutes of uh, game time that you're farming souls. Um, could be a little bit more than two minutes, but it's right around there. Uh, and your pairing is gonna lose 850 gold. Um, and if you're farming every minion, uh, you're gonna be sacrificing 40 souls, which not only are you sacrificing 40 souls, but it also takes you longer to get souls uh, because, right, you get less souls per minute if you're farming. So you're looking at at least 12 minutes uh, of game time that you're losing, uh, and your pairing is going to be losing 1,800 gold. So if you're farming to the support penalty, you're sacrificing your soul farm by two minutes to get your item five minutes faster, which is really good. You're basically getting to your power spike three minutes faster than if you were not farming. Um, now, if you're farming everything, you're sacrificing your soul farm by 12 minutes to get your item eight to nine minutes faster, which is not worth it. You are losing three to four minutes of time to your power spike. Now, the other point I wanna talk about is selling your support item as Senna. Um, before I go into this, I want to make an important point that you should always, always have one support item on your team with at least the first quest completed, right? The 500 gold so that somebody can ward, somebody can get vision at all times. Um, basically, Senna should not sell her support item until if someone else is going to buy it, a support item, she shouldn't sell hers until they have gotten the first quest complete. Um, so the first case where you'd want to sell your support item is if your pairing has horrible wave clear and they're unable to side lane on their own. Soraka is a great example of this. She never wants to be alone on a side lane. Uh, her wave clear falls off really hard. Um, and she basically, it's really hard for her to farm as the game goes on. Um, and she also only really needs two to three very inexpensive items to spike. Like Moonstar Redemption, once she's there, and then she can start getting more heal and shield power, right? She can get a Forbidden Idol. Uh, she's online. But these pairings are not super common, but um, this is like the earliest you would want to sell your support item. The more common scenario where you'd want to sell your support item is if you have uh, a Seraphine or a Tom Kenj, you have someone with decent wave clear, someone who is capable of side laning, um, but they don't need economy. In these cases, Senna should uh, look to sell her support item at about 120 souls, so her pairing should buy a, when she's around 100, so that way she can start abusing her range uh, and getting items to abuse her range with. The less scenario where you might want to sell your support item is if you have a high econ pairing, you typically don't want to sell it. However, if you have a solo laner who falls into this other category here, uh, for example, Nautilus mid was getting played at MSI this year. Uh, you would see sometimes Nautilus would go support item after getting two items because he doesn't want to sideline. He wants to group, but he also doesn't want to take farm from his ADC. 
So he just buys support items so that he has some gold income. Um, and in these scenarios, Senna would sell her support item. A couple other niche cases I want to talk about. Uh, if you have a bruiser or tank, it can be a little difficult to tell whether Senna should be uh, farming those two creeps per wave or not. Uh, and this is very situational. It depends on the game state, it depends on the whole draft, it depends on the enemy draft, it depends on uh, which specific champ it is. Um, typically, bruisers are going to want economy to be useful, and they have good wave clear, or at least decent serviceable wave clear, and they're capable of side laning. Um, but typically, tanks uh, care a bit less. They will be there more to support Senna, uh, and they will, uh, and Senna can be taking those two minions and eventually selling her support item. But this depends on the game. Uh, for example, Maokai is capable of doing either. He can function pretty well in high economy, uh, or he can be a low economy warden, protector. Basically, if his job is to just peel for Senna, uh, Senna should be farming and selling her support item. If uh, there's already a tank in the game, and maybe Maokai has some kills, he's kind of fed, uh, he should uh, continue farming. Uh, and take over the game. Uh, the last niche case I want to talk about is if you have a tank jungler or a low econ jungler, right? Rel, Sichuani, Nautilus, these types of champs who don't need gold. Uh, once uh, their jungle item is finished, Senna should be following them around in the jungle uh, when she can, and she should be taking the biggest monster in each jungle camp. Uh, because if she takes the big monsters, right? Like say Big Krug, Big Raptor, or Red Buff, um, she still gets a soul and the gold. Um, the little ones you want to let your jungler take so that you have a higher chance of getting souls, but the big ones Senna gets gold and a soul from, which is huge for her overall strength as a champ. So that's basically it. Uh, to recap, uh, in Senna TK or other similar lanes, Senna wants to farm one melee per wave before five minutes and two melees per wave after five minutes. And after this, at about 100 souls, uh, Kench should buy the support item, and then once he completes the quest, she should sell hers and farm. Uh, I think we came to this pretty objectively and conclusively. Uh, if you guys have any questions, thoughts, disagreements, uh, I would love to go over this more. Uh, let me know if this was helpful. Thanks.